Okay. And I, in order to tie between the two, where we'd have to have a 46 to 138 kV substation <laughs> to make that a loop, and it doesn't give us the capacity that we need. Um, we're going to put in, was it 1272 conductor? We're, we're, we're putting in a 1272 conductor between the two, and on a 46 kV line, you're just not, not going to get the capacity. <laughs> you're upgrading the 46s anyway. You said that. Well, at, at, some, at some point. Can I just step in here? I, I think I just want to make a correction just because I know of that substation. It is a very tiny single phase substation, or it might be. It's a very tiny substation that feeds you, the uh, state park and up Snake Creek Canyon. The line going up to Judge is at the very, very top of the map, or the Judge substation is at the very, very top of the map. Okay, back to the thing, the, as options. Did you look at looking at doing that and upgrading that teeny station instead of coming through the middle of a populated area? I mean, to me, you go, you're, gonna upgrade, you're upgrading everything anyway, right? You're going from 46 and doing the specs of 138 anyway. You're changing the Midway substation to make sure it can carry 138. So what's what's the problem of doing that one up there? You're out of the big populated areas. You're saying it's only serving the you know the golf course and whatever else, state park or whatever. So what? Why is that not a, was considered a legitimate option? Uh, I I really honestly believe that uh, it was considered uh, back in the back when the Summit Wasatch County Task Force was put together as far as bringing upgrading the, the, the Rocky Mountain Power System over there. Um, but you upgrade, you, you upgrade all that over there, it's got to go clear into Silver Creek. So, um, it's already, no, it's already 138. No, coming no. from Jordan L down to where, the, where that little orange line goes over to that substation. Why can't you jump it over there and bring it down, down the west side to the, to the Midway substation? Because I still need a point of delivery down on the north end of my system. And then I, I still got to upgrade my system and I still got to I still got to rebuild all my power lines. Well, haven't you already done that basically? You already got power lines on, on 40. I, I do have power lines on 40, but I still got to upgrade my 46 kV system. So we're talking about two different lines. Um, that's what that's what people back in 2012 um, has has been working against is us making sure that we're working together and building infrastructure together. Maybe I'm confused. All right, Jordan L is what? What book? What the watts and etc. 138. Jordan L. Jordan L is built to 138, and they have a line built to the stop. All right, sorry. So it's already built to 138. So now, for whatever reason, because it was a you had the easements and nobody was watching, you got the thing all the way down, halfway down, not uh, 40 there. <laughs> so why didn't y'all look at that little funny line going over there? And you, you're going to upgrade in Midway. You're going to have then you go ahead and upgrade, upgrade Judge, and there's your loop. I mean, you got 138. Keep going about Silver Creek. You already got that blue line already into Jordanell, right? Yeah, it's okay. 138. So why did you decide to go, basically you would have gone all the way straight through Heber, if it was something we hadn't yelled and screamed. Why didn't you look at that little five mile thing? I mean, I don't understand where we're, you're talking about a yes, 30 years, 50 year cost payout maybe, maybe. I think what he's trying to say is, I think everyone here will agree. We probably live in one of the most beautiful valleys in the Rocky Mountains very rustic. Why do we want to be the generation to ruin it? I think that's what everyone says. What alternative routes have been analyzed? Well, I haven't heard a word about that. All, all I know is you're going the same place, right by my house, as when I walked in here and there's been no discussion about anywhere else we could possibly go. Nope. Gotta go right, right by after Well, one thing we need to keep in mind is Rocky Mountain Power is going to do what Rocky Mountain Power is going to do. And so let's say that we entirely said, no, no deal, we're out of your deal, Rocky Mountain Power. We're going to just upgrade our own lines to what we need just for Heber. 
And those will be bigger lines because the federal standards have increased since those lines were put in. I don't know if they're almost as high as what we'll do anyway, right? Like they're not much smaller. So we do that. We need a second point of interconnect that we can't get unless we get it from Rocky Mountain Power. So if with this first point of interconnect that Jason's talking about that needs to be upgraded and rebuilt, we don't have any backup. And I don't know how long that project takes. I mean, you said you have to rebuild that. Or we... Yeah. So. Our current point of interconnect needs to be tore down and rebuilt. We need to get another one built, energized, prior to us rebuilding the current point of interconnect. So a new point of interconnect needs to be built and energized so that our system remains whole. All right, upgrade Judd before you do the midway. Right. Make Judd all of a sudden the big guy. If you're going to tear something down, well, there you go, Judge. Change that one all the way over, build your line across. Judge is not he would like power substation in some account. No, no. The no. one south of the Right there. There's the little one right there. Well, there. Right there. Right there. Whatever the one gives the golf course. Yeah. There. That, that's not ours either. It, Heber Light and Power has to take delivery from the bulk electric system. Our, our infrastructure has to be adequate for our needs. I can't take, I can't, I can't feed out of a Rocky Mountain Power load serving substation. Yes. I was at the November 8th meeting, and at the November 8th meeting, Rocky Mountain Power on one of the slides was shown to pay $5.2 million towards this project, whether it is underground or overhead. And this project is important to Heber Fire Power and Light and to Rocky Mountain Power. My question, and I ask this respectfully, is has Heber Power and Light effectively negotiated with the Rocky Mountain Power to determine an increased dollar amount that Rocky Mountain Power would pay to have all or part of this underground? Because what I heard on November 8th is that whether it was underground or overhead, the price that Rocky Mountain Power would pay would be the same. It's important to both Heber Power and Light and to Rocky Mountain Power. So that was one question I had coming out of that meeting. We've talked a little bit today about possibly airing some segments of the line and keeping others overhead. I heard at the meeting on November 8th and I've attended some of the earlier meetings that the Rocky Mountain Power, very uh, effective person, um, suggested or told us that the shortest pole across the valley will be 85 feet because it's wood and not steel, and that's 10 feet tall <coughs> than what the tallest pole is that has been put in on 40. That's going to have a significant impact on this valley as people have just Wait, 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 did you say 10 feet taller than the poles on 30? That's not my right. That is what the poles through the valley are. This woman taller. told us on November 8th. Are you talking about the planning commission? What meeting was that? The November 8th planning commission. And today's November 8th. I'm sorry, the last planning. I looked at my calendar to correctly. This woman was talking and she spoke to us and said that because the poles would be wood and not steel, that going across the valley they will be 10 feet taller than the poles that are on Highway 40 because they're wood. And I just respectfully say that, you know, the voters of this valley on Tuesday voted mm -hmm. that open space is important and that we care about our open space and what it looks like. And that we were willing, with increased tax costs, to try to attempt to protect that open space. So those are my two questions. How much will Rocky Mountain Power pay for underground? Will they increase that 5.2 million? And going across the valley, is there a way for us to at least bury segments of this so that we don't have 85 foot poles? Yeah, so Rocky Mountain Power will pay the whatever their percentage of the standard overhead cost would have been, state statute requires that 
uh, a municipality can place requirements on Rocky Mountain Power to do things like underground align, for example, but Rocky Mountain Power at that point only pays what their standard overhead cost would have been, and then the requesting party, whatever municipality it, uh, placed the request, would then play, pay the rest of that cost. So, no, we wouldn't be paying any more um, if a specific community required that the line be placed underground. Is it a state and, mandate? Yes, it's no. a state statute, yes. So it doesn't vary at all? It's a, it's a state statute, yeah, you, it, it doesn't vary. Well, and then the community could require. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. So um, a, a city or a county could place a condition to put the line underground, uh, but that, that city or county would then have to post excess costs, and excess costs are defined as uh, anything above the, the, the standard overhead line per normal process. So that, that's why. That's excluding right away costs. It, it, it would be it be total cost, yeah, total total excess cost. And then Nicole is the transmission engineer on this project, and I think she's probably able to better answer the question than I am. So, in terms of pole height, um, the eighty-five foot poles come from Rocky Mountain Power having our circuit on, Keeper Light Power having their transmission circuit on. Heber Light and Power has also requested that we provide space for future distribution circuits. So as the valley continues to grow and more people move in, they are able to feed those loads. Um, part of it, we could make the poles shorter if those distribution circuits were not on the poles, but then they automatically have to go underground and that has to be paid for. Um, that's something we're still negotiating with Heber Light and Power as we work through this process to try to limit the pole height and everything else. So why are these 102 feet tall? They're not. I measured them while they're lying on the ground. They are. The new poles are over 100 feet tall. They shouldn't be. They're only 75 out of the ground. No, they have concrete bases. Yeah, they're only 75 feet out of the ground. No, what about the turn poles? 75 feet out of the ground. They might be a little bit taller, but they're not 102 feet. That's not true. I measured. I've got a question about state statute. Um, from what I know of it, it's the minimum requirement of any law. Generally, they say, look, you've got to at least do this. And is that what state statute says for? your part of the statute, where that you say you only have to pay overhead costs because it's in state statute. That probably is the minimum requirement that you have to pay. But my question is, has Rocky Mountain Power ever paid any other community and helped contribute to bearing any other lines within the company ever? I don't know that I could speak for within the company ever. To my knowledge, they have not. But, and can you maybe uh, respond about the state statute? The state statute is the minimum requirement that you are required to do. If your company wanted to pay and help, the state statute isn't going to stop you. It just says you've got to pay this minimum well, amount. We are, we are obligated to all of our rate payers, just like Hebrew Light -like Power is concerned about all of their rate payers. So right, so you're no a corporation that is run on profit. We are so that's what, that's what the bottom line would be, not so much the statute is requiring you to do well, it that way. I did talk to a couple of people who have worked in different projects, and they said there is zero chance Rocky Mountain Power has ever or will ever bury a line because it sets a precedent. Or I'm not saying bury it, totally or pay for it, it, but at least contribute something. Yeah. to a buried well, line. And part of this, when all this negotiation took place, and that's where they came up with the 80%. So the, there's nothing right now today, and these people, have, none of us here have any authority to change that, change that um, agreement that's there. I mean, the board could change it, but I'm just saying these guys can't just say, yeah, sure, we'll throw in a couple hundred thousand dollars. That's not what I was asking, though. I wasn't expecting some right. different well, decision yeah, right. to they be could. made. They certainly could. 
but I can't imagine that their board members would be happy if they did that. Of course they wouldn't be. Yeah, okay. Mayor, just for the board, I have heard um, a couple times said that we don't want Rocky Mountain Power to have to set a precedent that they bury lines. I request respectfully, let us set a precedent. Let Midway Heber set a precedent that in beautiful places in the U.S. that large utility companies can't come in and say that they won't bury it. Let us be the ones that are in the Salt Lake Tribune not trying to negotiate our land prices and eminent domain. Let us be the one who set the precedent so other small towns can also have their lines buried. Let Rocky Mountain Power bear the burden to protect our beautiful <coughs> land. the first one in line. The problem is we would allow it. We just cannot. We've, we've searched legally. We've searched through statute. We've talked to other people. We have not found a way that we could force them to do that. And the state legislature has said, sure, city, if you want to bury your lines, we'll tell them to bury them, but you pay the cost. And so that's where we are. We don't, we don't have any alternative to that. So, so if we ask everyone whether they're willing to pay the cost, because this open space bond just increased our property taxes about the same as that chart that was shown would increase our utility bills if we buried the line. So is it would it be important no, that, that we ask everyone? How much is that which is bond per year? Ten million. It's a ten no, million two, dollar bond. Right, two. but I'm saying per per residence. For average. for a six hundred thousand dollar home it is forty dollars a year. A year. No, We're talking two, per month. But there's two. The midway bond is different. Bond. Yeah, there's two. The lowest income people in our valley are mostly in Heber City. Yeah. And so it's a little different animal than midway. And so, you know, we, we hear from a lot of people that don't want to pay one dollar more. And I get it. I feel like it's, I, I don't like it. Last thing I want to do is be supporting this. But we have to have an alternative. We have to be able to say, how do we get the power that we need for the future in the next, you know, five years? And Celeste is going to have an answer for that. Me no, and shouldn't be <laughs> Anyway. Okay. Yes, I, may I? Yeah, please. I want to reiterate that tonight is not a done deal, right? We're trying to update everybody. We're trying to let you know um, where we are to this point. Some excellent questions have been brought up. Um, and I appreciate the frustration of the gentleman who wants to know, aren't there other places we could take this? Um, one thing that I, I didn't feel was made clear, he were like power has to have substations. So we have to we have to work within substations that are in the Heber Light Power system, not just Rocky Mountain system. So however, that is not to say that we can't maybe reconfigure part of this. So we're still open for part of that. I, I want to reiterate that. I also want to make sure that we are clear that if if we don't do a joint project with Rocky Mountain Power, they will complete their loop, they'll just find a different way to do it. And so I appreciate the comment that let us be the ones to set the precedence that it has to be buried, and we can, we can bury it. Um, I personally have met with several uh, previous Rocky Mountain Power employees, who one in particular is currently a consultant for communities such as ours, and that may be something we want to look at. Um, she made it very clear that Rocky Mountain Power does not marry. They don't pay to marry. But that maybe there are other things Rocky Mountain Power would be willing to contribute to help us with the project if we want to bury segments. Um, I also agree with the comments that we, two open space bonds passed in this community at Tuesday's election. Also at Tuesday's election was the people speaking very loudly that they don't want to increase density in our community. So we very clearly